Hey there YouTubers, it is Dungeon Master Mark and today we are going to do a video on how to paint lava tiles. That is right. Um, if some of you are like me and you've seen the Dwarven Forge lava and it is a little underwhelming. To me it does not look lava like enough. And uh, I wanted to do something a little out of the box, out of the ordinary, and something just over the top. And uh, this was my idea on the, the lava itself. So obviously a lot of the, some of the tiles you can see I've painted, put some LEDs in a couple pieces, just to add a little bit of uh, flickering lights and just give it a little bit extra depth. Uh, the paint itself on this, I, I'm using the Game Decor Paints. And uh, bear with me, I'm going to do a real quick video, step-by-step, -step, show you guys how to get this particular effect. Um, lava itself, normally, um, the very center of the lava is going to be the hottest. So it's going to be a white and almost like a yellow, and it's going to go to orange, red, maybe even a dark purple, and then black, where it's, where it's dried or where it's hardened. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to do a little different. We're going to use yellow, kind of like a highlight. We're going to go a deep, deep red towards the center an orange and then bright yellow to kind of make it pop. So we're still using the same colors, but what we're doing is we're kind of doing the actual heat of it kind of backwards. So this is just a piece of paper, a picture I printed off that I found on the internet uh, where it looks kind of like a lava, like a vortex or portal. And I just blew it up uh, through paint and windows and printed it out. But uh, the color pieces themselves, bear with me. Like I said, we're going to do a step-by-step -step, and I'm going to show you guys how to make some super awesome looking lava pieces. All right, guys, well, stay tuned, and uh, let's get this underway. All right, guys, so this is going to be step one in the lava painting tutorial. Um, as you guys may have saw in the previous uh, pictures I posted the other day on Facebook and in the, U in the YouTube channel, I pictured uh, some of the lava or the magma pieces I did. And the product I actually use is from a company called uh, Game Decor which is, I believe the website is gamedecor.com, which what I'll do is I'll actually put a little link down below in the uh, description. But uh, their paint kits come in these nice little kits, um, which he was nice enough to go ahead and send me a couple kits. Uh, I actually paid for these, so it wasn't a free product trial or anything like that. But uh, they come in a kit, so it's everything you need. So you have a base and then your highlight colors. Um, that's the water one. We have a, a cavern stone kit. And then this is actually the lava kit. So it starts with you have a white base. And you have, uh, they actually do number them like step B, so it actually gives you a really nice description. And it goes in a color where, so you have, obviously you're going to have your white in your base, where in your place you're going to have a lava, a lighter yellow, and then you're going to have a little bit darker orangish color. Um, this, I know it looks a little pinkish, but it actually darkens up once the paint dries. And you have kind of a purplish hue that uh, is going to be kind of like the really, really dark lava areas where it's not quite cooled all the way. And then a black highlight. So, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you guys how to paint uh, a Dwarven Forge tile. But uh, doing a Hearse Arts tile or maybe even foam or something is going to be pretty much exactly the same. But uh, let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to go to step two, applying your base coat, which is going to be the white. And let's go ahead and get to it. Thanks, guys. All right, guys, let's go ahead. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and go right on to step two. So here is our white uh, base paint. As you can tell, it's very, very watery. Um, almost on the thin side, but that's actually a good thing because you're wanting it to get down deep into the little crevices and cracks and crannies and everything like that. So like I said, you want to be kind of liberal with this. Like I said, don't worry too much about if you're making a mess or anything like that. And we also might want to make sure we get any place where we want the lava to look like it's deep down in there. Like I said, don't worry too much about making a mess because we're going to be covering up lots of areas and we'll go over the next coat. And then the final coat is going to cover up any mistakes. So there we go. Like I said, you just want to look around. If you see anything on the wall that has little spots, make sure we fill it in. There's one last little spot here. 
Then over here we'll leave that. So we'll leave that so it looks like the lava hasn't quite made it there yet. So yeah, that's it. As you can see, a couple little bubbles, which are uh, not too bad, though. Like I said, we're going to leave that where it is, and I will come back once this is dry, and we'll go to the next step, guys. And uh, we'll be back here in a little bit. All right, guys, we are now going to go ahead and move on to step three. And we're going to go to the build-up level. Let's see if I can get that in there, though. So this is the first coat of the lava. So it's probably hard to tell at this level how bright this yellow is. Let's go ahead and crack open some of this and put it in the dish there. Actually, I probably put way too much in there, but that's all right. And like I said, this we don't need to be too careful with. We just need to get it in the cracks. It's okay if you slop a little bit over the sides because we're going to be going over it anyway. So we just make sure we cover as much as the white as possible. Now this paint is a little bit thicker than the white, so you do want to just be a little bit careful that you don't... Uh, get like any really big heavy drops we don't want to cover up any detail so we don't want to cake it on but we want to make sure we have good coverage make sure there's not any big giant gaping holes now the good thing about a yellow color like this obviously um, the next step we're going to do is we're going to start applying like the reds and the oranges now there's going to be two different ways we can do this. We can do where we have uh, like a traditional like lava or flame color where we're going to go yellow, orange, and then we're going to go red a little bit higher up. Um, the ones I did in my video, I actually went a little bit backwards on the flame process. And I actually have my, the, my very darkest areas, the red color. And so it's going to be a little backwards and traditionally like the yellow is going to be the very hottest part of the flame other than like white and the blue. But uh, I think it makes it stand out a little bit. It kind of attracts the eye a little bit more than normal. Which I will show you guys how to do both ways, though, just to be safe. And uh, there's the next step. Like I said, we have a little bit of slop over. But that's all right, though, because it's all part of the plan, folks. And I know right now it looks a little ugly. But uh, stay with me here. It's going to keep getting better and better. All right, guys. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next step, which we're going to go ahead and apply the Molten Lava Build-Up C. So this is going to be the next step of orange. I'm going to go ahead and pop a little bit in there, though. All right. Like I said, this one we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing we did before. Uh, we don't need to go quite up as high on the sides or the ridges now as we did before. But we just want to make sure we get the very deepest points. Scoop this back just a little bit there. Apologize, working at kind of a weird angle here. Like I said, ideally you want to make sure you get the very deepest parts with this color. Obviously, places like here, so the little stones, we'll make sure you get around the stones if possible. And this is going to do two different things. Obviously, it's going to add a little bit of depth and color to the yellow that's already there. In areas where it is a little bit thicker, it's going to give us a little variation in that color. So it's going to give us that stratification to where it looks like the, the uh, lava itself has actually changed colors there. Or maybe it's starting to harden a little bit or cool off. There you go. It's not too bad. We do want to make sure we get the sides just a little bit, though. So any place like right over here where we have a drip down. There we go. So I'm not sure how we'll be able to tell right yet. But uh, you can kind of tell a little bit darker and a little bit lighter areas. So once we get to the black paint, that's really going to make those pop. 
So yeah, that's it for the, I guess this is technically the fourth step or the third coat of paint. So uh, next up is going to be the red. I'll probably give this about a half an hour or so to dry, and then we'll come back with the step D. So bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a little bit, and we'll be back. All right, guys, we are moving on to the next step here, which is going to be the red color. As you can probably tell, when you first squeeze that out, it is going to look very pink. Not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up. So just like the color of the bottle, it is a little pink on the pink side. But uh, don't worry, it is going to dry much, much darker red color. Now this color we're going to do a little different. We just want to go right in the very deepest spots. And we want to drag it up a little bit. But we don't want to splash too much on the outside. because We want those little crest of the yellow. So like I said, we just want to make sure we kind of drag it through there. Kind of like how the lava itself is flowing into places. And uh, we don't need to go too crazy. We don't need too much of the red because we're going to have leave some areas where there's yellow. So like I said, just kind of take your brush and kind of drag it a little bit. Areas like this where it's kind of deep, almost like a chasm, you can kind of screw it up a little bit. See, I'm kind of just kind of pulling it up. But uh, for the most part, we want to drag it. Quick here. Narrow areas like this are going to be a little bit tougher. But we can still scoot it through there really gentle like. There we go. Now some areas where you have these little kind of indentations, you might need to kind of stick your brush in there kind of pull them up just a little bit. And we actually want to kind of areas like this where we want it to look like it's flowing, we're just going to pull it down a little. And we just want to go back through these deep areas here. Now, areas like this here is going to be kind of optional. What we're going to do is we're just going to try to get some of them. We're going to leave some of them a little empty, like right here. Because we don't want too much in there. There we go. Let's go ahead and pull it back in this area here. Like I said, I know that looks a little bit like a mess right now, guys. But uh, bear with me. We're getting towards the end here. We're going to do this very deep area. We're just going to put a little bit more red down at the bottom. I'm not sure how well the camera's going to pick it up. You can see some areas where there's still a lot more orange and yellow shining through the bottom. We're just going to pull a little bit more through there. Don't need too much. We want to take areas like this. Like I said, some of that's going to be getting covered up later, so we're not too worried about it. What we want to do is we just want to give the illusion of depth. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and leave this to dry, and I will be back in about another 30 minutes. So we can go to the next step, which is the, the dark purple, which is not going to take very long. Alright, I'll be back in a little bit, guys. Hey guys, it's Dungeon Master Mark again. Going to be adding an additional step today because I was sloppy. I admit it, I, I made a boo-boo. <laughs> so what I did is I went ahead and got a little bit more of the, uh, the old yellow there out. And some of the spots where I slopped a little bit too much out, I just went ahead and went around the corners there. And just kind of basically highlighted the yellow. And a couple areas I went over with the brighter orange. And you can see the red is starting to dry. It's starting to darken up a little bit. But it's not quite ready yet for the dark purple. So uh, like I said, I just want to let you guys know I went around the edges and just add a little bit more yellow and a little bit more of the orange in a couple areas. That way we can bring out a little bit more of the detail. So bear with me. I'm going to come back here in a couple minutes and we're going to go to the purple. Or I should say super dark red. I'll be right back. Hey there folks, it is Dungeon Master Mark back again. And uh, we are moving on to the... Next step, the Molten Lava E, which is the purplish kind of color. Now for this, we're going to use a super fine tip uh, brush there. As you can see, the tip is extremely, extremely tiny. And I'm just going to use just a little drop or so. And what we're looking for there is any type of little details, maybe right here like this, that we can pop out. 
I'm not sure how well that's going to show up. But uh, all that we're going to do is we're just going to add some little ridges where it looks like maybe some stuff is starting to dry. And like I said, we're just going to barely be barely touching some areas. And what I'll do is a couple of these little small rocks, little pebbles. Normally I would pick those out if I was uh, painting a dungeon set. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and ruffle a couple of those up there. Like I said, not much. Like I said, this is just going to be super, super fine little details. Um, areas where you have like a really deep little chasm like this. You can actually just take and make a couple of little dots. All you're wanting to do is just add some little details where it looks like little hunks of uh, cooled down rock and things like that. So uh, bear with me. I'm going to add a couple little more details and I'll come back here in a little bit once we're ready to go to the black. Hey guys, it's Dungeon Master Mark again. Let's go ahead and move on to the next and almost final step here. We're going to be adding the black. So basically what we're wanting to do is any place where there is uh, an area like this where we have too much yellow. We're just going to kind of go in. We're going to kind of feather it in. We want to be gentle. And we just want to add the black. Just like that. Like So we want to feather it in just real gentle. Now, the farther you move back, like I said, you can go all the way back on the tile if you want it to be completely black. You can leave a little bit of gray if you want. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get to actually come back and just do a little gray highlight once we're all done there. So we're not that worried about it. So the sides we're not overly worried about, but any place like that, we're just going to touch those up as well. So kind of like that. So that's going to be kind of what this what the final product itself is going to look like. Now pieces like this, like this little stone up here sitting up by itself, we just want to kind of go around. It's going to be a little harder to feather these. We want to make sure we get as much at the top as we can. Just leaving just a tiny little sliver of yellow. Now on the side, what we want to do is we just make sure we go down just a little bit. Now we want to make sure we blend it in side like this. Now we're going to do it in this area right here. We're actually going to make that look like the lava is flowing down the side. It's not extremely noticeable once the pieces are all kind of put together, but it does give that little bit of extra added a uh, little bit of realism. So we just want to take a little step further there. Let's go get some more paint on the brush here. So just keep feathering real gentle. If I get the camera back into focus here. Like I said, the closer you can get to the red, you just want a little, a tiny sliver of black there. Sorry, the camera's not liking to focus here. All right, well, bear with me one second, guys. I'm going to go ahead and pause this for a second, and I'll come back once we have all the black on. I'll be right back. All right, guys, all the black is now filled in. So I'll just go ahead and rotate that around a little bit to show you guys. And like I said, ideally, like I said, you want to leave just a very, very small amount of the yellow around the sides. And that's going to simulate, simulate some of the uh, thermal difference, some of the temperature differences between the two. Um, you want to be extremely careful. Like I said, when you do do the, the two different shades of yellow, you want to make sure you leave some variations in some spots. So some spots you want a little darker, some spots you want a little bit more yellow. And I'll just pinpoint kind of what I'm showing you here. Um, like some areas, like right down here, you'll see where there's a little bit more color changes between the yellows, like here and there. And then over here, you see where there's a lot more of the dark yellow. So it definitely gives off that illusion of where the, the magma or the lava is changing colors. And like I said, anywhere you, where you want to leave uh, a darker area, like where the magma is starting to cool, you can just add a little dot of colored magma, which actually almost looks 
Forgot I had a couple little stones there I forgot to touch. I need to hit those real quick. Go ahead and hit those real quick. Try and touch those up real quick. There we go. I might need another little touch on that one there. There we go. Sorry guys, I got a little bit of OCD there at times, but uh, yeah, like I said, you guys kind of get the idea there. And like I said, anything where it's floating around like these little rocks, I wouldn't worry about putting yellow around those too much because that could be something that's still moving around in the actual like floating floating lava. Um, if you get a chance, like I said, definitely look up on YouTube. You can pull up some videos of like live lava from Hawaii and that. And you'll see sometimes where there'll be like large pieces of black rock like floating in the lava where it hasn't melted or stuff that's broke off. And like I said, if you do see low areas like this, feel free to leave some, either maybe a red color, maybe a yellow. So it looks like, you know, the surface of this stone isn't entirely completely stable. I mean, you, there's always that threat that you could fall through or something similar. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let this dry, guys. And when I come back, we're going to go over a real light dry brush over this. Just a very, very, very light hint of white. So I can show you guys the final product. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are back. The very final step. <laughs> I know you guys are thinking how much, how many more steps is there? Uh, the last very thing we're going to use just a little bit of the Stone Edge, the Jordan Forge or Corny paint. And now we're going to do a very, very light dry brush. So normally I would say just a couple drops. You could do a whole set of these, but like literally I'm using not even one drop for this whole tile. I have hardly barely any paint on my brush at all. And all I'm going to do is very gently touch it. I'm talking, imagine you're dusting a most delicate thing on earth. Hitting both directions here. And what we're looking for there, that last and final step, we just want that to look like it's starting to harden a little bit. You can see it's still very, extremely, extremely dark, but we just want that illusion that uh, it is definitely starting to turn into stone where it's starting to harden up there. And uh, that is it, guys. Um, so like I said, the paint jobs you can get out of this game decor uh, from Paintworks. Beautiful, beautiful paint. Um, the white is a little thin, but I think in a case like this, I think that is actually a really, really good thing because you want that to seep down into little cracks. Um, obviously, you have the yellows, the uh, dark red and almost like a purple, and you have the, the black color there. So the only thing I added to this was just a little bit of the dry edge, the white paint. So uh, a big thanks to the guys at Gameworks for coming out with a really, really beautiful uh, paint scheme. Like I said, they sell the whole kit all together, so you can literally do all those colors. Uh, they have lots of other colors as well if you guys are looking for some decent paint. Definitely feel free to check them out. Um, if you guys have any other requests for videos coming up, please feel free to shoot me an email or leave a comment in the video. I will try to get to them as quickly as I can. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, hopefully you guys were able to put together some really awesome-looking lava sets as well. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.